The last episode was appropriately titled Kaboom, as we finally blew this team up. Four straight years of winning a division title, I'm quite sure. Four straight years of losing in the first round, that of which I am definitely sure of. And it leads us to this offseason. Now, the draft, of course, was successful in that we were able to acquire some good prospects, not only through the draft, but through trading, and of course on top of acquiring players outright, like Cole Sillinger, uh, we also now have a stockpile heading in to this next draft, which some people might find it to be overkill, but again, my argument is we dismantled a team that won four straight division titles. Yeah, we're going to end up with a lot of draft picks because that's a lot of talent that we moved out. Now, we don't necessarily need to make all these picks. I don't think we will. There will be trades, but we're also in a spot right now where we have nearly $40 million to spend this offseason. And at its core, this team is still going to be solid. We don't know how good Gustafson's going to be at the NHL level. It's, you know, it's a rookie season coming up. But we're going to be bringing in somebody, and I already know who after looking at some goalie stats before I hit the record button. Uh, we're going to be bringing in someone who should be able to back him up just in case. Defensively, it's not going to be great, obviously, and there will be a lot of signings that need to be made. And then you look at the forward side of things where there's still Meyer, Hurdle, Couture, Gambrell, Perfetti, and then this you know chunk of talent, Gregor, Blickfeld, Chekovic, Leonard, True, that and hell, Ellison might make the roster as well, where we're in an interesting spot right now where in this episode, as far as the approach goes, I need to decide if I want us to be bad for the sake of being bad when there is the opportunity here to kind of take a shortcut in getting this team back on track sooner rather than later, which is the game plan. At the end of the day, the goal is to win the cup, if not cups. So the big, the big decisions to make here... Again, goaltending is pretty straightforward. How much do I spend to get this defense to rebound? And forward-wise, how much talent do I bring in when we do have this young core of players that could help fill out the bottom six? You know, do I spend money to bring in decent, higher-rated veterans, or do I just let those guys go out and do the job and see what they can do? And I'm not sure yet. Again, we, we had the perfect you know, the perfect uh, perfect title for the last episode. I don't know what to name this one, at least not yet. So, goaltending-wise, outright, the guy that we're going to be signing is Peter Morazic, who has been ridiculous over the past four seasons, with the exception of one year. He is the perfect guy to bring in right now to shore things up in case things go poorly. He's also you know he's also looking for a pretty damn cheap deal. Bishop, Flurry, yeah, Bishop in particular, his stats haven't been great. But if I can outduel the Penguins here with a two by two contract from Morazic, we're looking great. Defensively, here's the thing. Darnell Nurse, love to bring him in, but it would be six by three. Six million for three years. That's a lot of money to commit right out of the gates. Chris Letang dropped that down to a one-year, $8 million deal. That's not too bad. The one guy I definitely want to go for here is Oscar Clefbaum, who, much like Bjorkstrand a few years ago, has been kind of on a downturn with the team he's been on, so we can sign him to a damn good deal, rehab his career, and make the most out of that. So we are going to look for, I would say, two, three over two. Hopefully no one else sends out an offer. Of course, the other offer that we have out right now is to Houston, who I still have no idea how we lost him, if I traded him accidentally or what, or if he was a part of a different trade that I just don't remember, which honestly, he might be. I don't recall what that trade would be, though. But yeah, I don't remember what happened with him. I don't know if he'll resign. That's more of a crapshoot. So like I said, defensively, I don't really know what to do here, because if we end up with Clefbaum, that's Carlson Clefbaum, and nobody else. We could try to sign Nurse and Latang. That would be a decent little one-two punch for a top four. I just don't know if that's the right way to go. Do we spend all of that money just because we can? Do we lock down Darnell Nurse for six million plus? I mean, thirty to forty point defenseman. 
That's not too bad, but we did just get rid of a lot of those type of contracts. Do we want to immediately, you know, restock the team with those type of deals? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, you look at the draft picks that we have, it could very well work out. So I'm not against bringing in Nurse and Latang. Goss to spare, I mean, look, we still have Eric Carlson on this team. We could technically afford that. That would be a massive issue for us. I, I don't think we're going to be able to properly balance having those two on the same team. I mean, especially we're looking at 12 million bucks for Shane Goss to spare enough. If I'm spending 12 million bucks on anybody, it's David Posternock, who I don't know if I'm bringing him in or not, but if we were to, the top line would be Posternock, Meyer, and Hurdle. Holy hell, that top line. So, yeah, big decisions to make here. Defensively, if we don't go with Nurse and Latang, for me, we'd be looking at Brian DeMoulin, Brandon Carlo, guys like that to help fill out this defense. I think the main issue is that we have a good enough team, in theory, that we could still make the playoffs anyway. So why not give us an even better chance to win when we do have that stockpile of picks and we're not solely dependent on our first round pick being the one to try and help turn this team around. I think we're swinging for the fences here. I think we are swinging for the fences. That's an expensive deal for Darnell Nurse. But if I give him the term, I don't even know if he'd want that. If I go 625 over three years for Darnell Nurse, let's see what happens. And for Chris Letang, I'm going to go one year at 7 8 and just see if he accepts that. So we would have Carlson Letang, Nurse, and Clefbaum as the top four. The third pairing from there, it almost doesn't matter. I am kind of intrigued, though, at Brian DeMoulin and Brandon Carlo. Carlo's not a perfect fit for the third pair, but as a penalty kill specialist, it could work. I'm also intrigued by Nick Jensen, who fits a little bit better than Carlo does. Not that I want DeMoulin and Jensen to both be third pairing guys. So it's like we can run with guys like that, or we just go with Mario Ferraro, Hayden Flurry like we have over the past few years. Uh, but you know what? I am I am intrigued enough that if we wanted to make this work, Jensen's technically a two-way. I'm intrigued by Nick Jensen enough that I want this to work. If he accepts that contract, it's worth it. We're, we're going to spend some money here to rebuild this defense. I don't know if this is the right way to go. We're going to find out as we're, we're we're dropping the money, man. We're doing it. We have the money to spend. Let's go for it. And then forward-wise, here's the big issue, like I said. Do I sign guys like Hoffman Hints again, who's honestly I think we have to for how cheap of a deal he's looking for. Like Michael Ferlin, too. You got a lot of these guys who are looking for cheap deals. Do we sign these guys or do we go with Chekovich? Do we go with John Leonard? I'm not sure, but David Posternock is probably too good to pass up on, especially if we can save a little bit of money. I think I'm honestly going to go a bit crazy with spending this money. It's nearly 40 million bucks, and like I said, why not try to be competitive if we can be, because we're not solely dependent on that draft pick needing to work out for us. So again, it would be Pasternak, Meyer, Hurdle, Couture, Gambrell, Perfetti. We could bring in a couple of third liners. We could bring in some big talent. It would push Gregor, Blickfeld, Leonard, Chekovich, Cotton, Alex True out of contention for those bottom six spots. But it could work. And the reason why I'm intrigued that you know, going forward is because, again, that's the goal, ultimately. But if we were to bring in, like, say, for example, a Nick Ritchie. He's not even looking for four million bucks. Hints is a steal and a half. Nick Ritchie is a 40-point guy. 42 points last year. He's basically asking for a million bucks per point, or uh, per every 10 points, which kind of works out. You know, hey, a million bucks, okay, cool, I'll get you 10 points. That's how some people choose to look at it. Hints, Richie, and Furland 
are the really interesting ones to me. Kerfoot's there as well. 42 points for him. Has he stayed in Toronto the whole time? He has. You know, plus minus not looking that good, but it doesn't necessarily have to. How does he fit in on this team? Bottom six lines, all power play, all penalty kill. That's pretty damn good. How does how would Nick Ritchie fit in on this team? He does not. Okay, so Nick Ritchie won't be uh, joining this team. We got to go for hints. He he fits in on the third line. We got to do it. If he'll sign for that again, hey, we might even end up trading him at least this time. I'd be you know planning on playing him. Furlan doesn't fit in, which kind of sucks. JVR is only asking for four million bucks. He fits in on the lines. Jesus, he had 56 points last year. JVR is an interesting one. Kerfoot fits in as well. Kerfoot hints in JVR as a third line. Seems pretty damn good to me. There was Donskoy, but again, Kerfoot's looking a little bit better. Or we trust who we already have. At the very least, those would be, you know, the younger guys would be battling to fill out that fourth line. That might be the better way to do it. Even James Neal, he's back to scoring too. I think I, I think I have my mind made up here. I think I do. Alex Kerfoot, there's competition from Colorado to get him to go back. But I'm going to send a deal to Kerfoot. I am going to send a deal to James Van Riemsdyk as well. And if everybody signs here, guess what? We're going for a fifth straight division title. It's a lot of money to be thrown out. But I don't hate it. And I think being aggressive here is the best way to go. Rather than being terrible just for the sake of being terrible because it feels like right now we're supposed to be terrible. Yes, Clifford Doan was our head coach before. I just signed him as an AHL assistant. Just max out the contract, right? And uh, Nate Stewart there was the backup option. These are scouts going through. Handled that off stream before we started. So let's see what happens here. Moment of truth for a lot of these guys and what the hell this team is going to look like heading into next season. As Houston has signed, Pellick was dealt for a first, Clefbaum is signed, Brandon Carlo is here, Peter Morazic, Oscar Clefbaum, JVR felt lowballed, DeMoulin signed, Kerfoot went to Buffalo, Jensen signs, Houston is back. Again, I have no idea how the hell we even lost him, but that's not too bad. So Kerfoot and JVR say no. We have 32 million bucks with offers to Posternock, Nurse, and Latang, and somebody else still out there. So JVR's price has gone up. Hints, you know what we should see? We should see if these guys sign first before we change the approach. David Posternock is a shark. Hints went to Pittsburgh. Nurse signs, Latang signs. Holy hell. David, David Posternock is, is a member of the San Jose Sharks now. So the outlook for this team just changed a lot in a matter of seconds. Goaltending-wise, Gustafson, Morazic, Elias, and Imont, and Alexiev. That's perfect. We're good to go. Defensively, we now have Carlson, Latang, Nurse, Clefbaum, Carlo DeMoulin, and Jensen as our seven. I love that. And then the AHL is going to be Flurry, DeSimone, Ferraro, Hewson, Potentially Benin. I don't know if I want to sign you yet. But that's four. So I think we would probably sign another four. Another four AHL defensemen. Maybe even one more. And now forward-wise, we have Pasternak, Meyer, Couture. Hurdle, Gambrell, Perfetti. But then again, forward-wise, it, it's still Chekovic, Gregor, Leonard. So I, I still have that choice for the bottom six with Kerfoot and JVR rejecting and Heinz. Hints or Heinz going to Pittsburgh, which they must have offered him a little bit more. I think I tried to risk it by lowballing him a little bit. But with all those guys rejecting, I still have that option on the table to go with our youth for the uh, forwards as Gostas Bear goes to Washington, which is pretty ridiculous. So quickly, let's solve the defensive issues as there are still some good defensemen out there, but obviously we don't need them. Uh, we're looking at AHL caliber players here, and hmm, 
we could just sign the top talent available and really boost up the caliber of that AHL team because there aren't too many guys that are going to get that much better. So let's go for Connor Clifton because he's a Bruin and I love him. Let's go for Julius Bergman, former Sharks prospect. Let's go for Tim Heed, another, another former player of ours. And let's go for, is that Kevin Miller? Matter, wasn't Matter when a shark way back when? I know he was a Bruin before. He was a shark way back when, wasn't he? Yeah, I was going to say. Pretty sure he was. Let's bring Matt Irwin back to the organization. Forward-wise, what am I doing? We're still looking at like the, you know, the likes of JVR. Hornquist, mate. Man, he's looking for a ton of money. And I can see he must still be playing next to Crosby in Pittsburgh. That's the only thing that makes sense. Oh, yeah. You're, you're playing next to Crosby or Malkin. So who fits in on the third line? Adrian Kempe. We'd be looking at JVR still. So Kempe, JVR, maybe Kajula. Or I just trust Alex Kalorn. Or I trust the younger guys. I'm going to trust the younger guys. I like that we spent money on the defense. I'm going to trust the younger guys that we already have to help make the bottom six a competitive, you know, help make that into a competitive set of lines. So big money spent on the defense. Big money spent on David Posternock. We're already listed as contenders again, which is about right. So forward-wise, we have our top nine, 10, 11, and 12, and then one, two, three, four. I don't know if else I'm attacking a count. Four, five cylinders in the AHL. It's six with Heinen and seven. So we're looking at seven. So we have seven forwards signed. We're probably gonna wanna sign another seven. So that makes sense. So let's bring in the top talent that we can. Again, we already checked. There aren't any top free agents out there aside from Houston, who, again, I don't remember if we signed him, you know, if we traded him away or just accidentally got rid of him. But I'm happy to have him back. So let's go for... We can sign whoever the hell we want here, too. Let's just sign players that I like, I guess. Casey Sezekis, I'm tempted. Who do we want to sign here? I gotta sign seven forwards. Let's bring back Lucas Radil again, because that might be a chemistry boost for some people. Uh, I could just bring in a bunch of veteran face punchers for the looks of it. Just a bunch of grinders. Oh boy, you know what? Let's do that. Let's have that AHL team just be a nightmare to play against. Chris Wagner, Walpole Zone. Cal Clutterbuck is our third. Let's go back up to the top here. <laughs> and uh, we are going to go with Zach Cassian as the fourth. Fifth option is going to be Kyle Clifford. Number six is going to be Derek Grant. I know Smoot and Astral will be happy about that one. And number seven, I do love me some Riley Nash, but Matt Martin. It's just perfect. And you know what? No, we can't we can't stop there. Dale Weiss. Dale Weiss. If only I could get Milan Lucic on the team. Best friends. Best friends. I do love me some Tim Schaller, but there we go. So the AHL team is gonna be very competitive to play against because it's just gonna be all fringe NHLers with very few actual prospects. And this NHL team, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know if I'm happy about this or not, but like I said, my attitude was, okay, I can have this team be awful, and we can try to bank on our first round pick being very good, or we spend some money, strategically in some places, like the Latang deal, and we make this team competitive again right out of the gates in the aftermath of what we just did, which if you can have that option, why not do it, right? I mean, again, we have all those draft picks. We have the prospects that are already within our organization. You know, fill a couple of holes there with some already talented players and try to make the best of it. I don't hate it. 
Let's see what this team ends up looking like, although the first thing I want to check is Matthew, I think it was Matthew Benin. Uh, let's see, unsigned. He's a 76 still. We'll probably leave him unsigned. Him, Strimbu, Felino, the guys that we just picked up in the first round, I think we'll leave those guys as unsigned for the moment. So our team, we have Gustafson and Morazic. Gustafson's an 83 without having ever played an NHL game. Defensively, it's now Carlson, Nurse, Latang, who's down to an 85, so I know I'm paying a lot of money to an 85 overall defenseman at 36 years old, but he's still solid and will fit in well on this team. Clefbaum, Carlo Demoulin, and Jensen. And the key is, for all of these guys, one-year deals, right? One-year deals, aside from Nurse and Clefbaum and, of course, Eric Carlson. So I don't hate that, because like I said, even with Carlson, and sure, you know, instead of, I would have signed Clefbaum anyway. That wouldn't have made sense to not. So say we have Carlson, Clefbaum, and then the defense would have looked something like this. Like, I can kind of let you see what this team would have looked like had we not made any major signings. That would have been the defense. That defense, you know how this game works. That defense, and instead of Morazic, say we have Eliason, that goaltending tandem and that defense might have still been able to make the playoffs, right? I don't think that, you know, the version of that team that you're seeing right there would have necessarily been bottom feeders. And even with the offensive side of things, you know, you take out David Posternock and the team still looks okay. So I think it, it may have been the best you know, for the best, to go for it, be the best team that we can be, while also still having that stockpile of picks. Now again, forward-wise, the only guy that we signed is David Posternock. Without him, this is what the team looks like. That might have still been good enough to make it. It might have been. And to be honest, again, knowing how this game is, I think it would have been. Meyer, Hurdle, Couture, Gambrell, Perfetti, and probably Chekovic. Yeah, the bottom six looks a bit rough, but I genuinely think this team could have still made the playoffs. 100%. So, I don't know. Time will tell as we will swap those two around because we do want Sorensen to be a scratch. And now, Sillinger is going to be in junior for the rest of the year. That's probably for the best to let him play in junior one more year, although he is a 79. We could give Sillinger a chance. Max Latunov's 27. You could give him a chance. You could give David Cotton an opportunity. Ellison is going to be in the AHL, as is Jean-Luc Foudy. Sasha Chemilevsky is another one of those guys I talked about that could be given an NHL chance. Same as Gallant. And Heinen's right there, too. Fratton's in junior, but Heinen's also in the AHL. So what I think we're going to do... I don't know if Alex True deserves the chance over Sillinger. What if... You know, I think... I mean, because right here we only have 10, 11... I need to call somebody else up anyway. A fourth line of Leonard, Gregor, and True. Blickfeld, Chekovic, and Perfetti? I honestly think I might give Sillinger a chance. I think I'm going to. We're going to give Cole Sillinger a chance to make this team, but we're in a very similar spot to where we were last year, where we have a lot of guys where it's like, okay, if you're not getting it, if you're not getting the job done, you're going back to the minors. It's pretty much what we're looking at. So say that were to be the fourth line, I'd have to change up player types to get the chemistry, but that's fine. Sillinger maybe shouldn't necessarily be top six. But we could give him the opportunity. And then again, Perfetti is a third-line guy, so that's pretty much perfect. I mean, I don't hate that. I don't. And again, like I said, in the AHL, especially too, if you look at the forwards, Chemilevsky, Foodie, Heinen, and Ellison, Cotton, Latunov, Gallant. There are so many players here that are right on the fringe of deserving a spot. And we're going to find out this year if certain players are worth keeping around. So what I want to do, say we do give Sillinger the chance. Obviously I want to call up Sorensen. He's going to be our 
healthy scratch for the year. He's been my Mr. Dependable from the early stages of me playing him on the first line, much to a lot of people's chagrin. But see, we were to run with this. Again, I don't I don't hate it. Blickfeld has that 87 offensive awareness. The offensive awareness is on the third line. Like, they should be able to do something. Let me know what you think, but that's kind of the general idea of what this team's going to look like. Although John Leonard really doesn't fit in well on the fourth line. He doesn't. Which sucks. I mean, he's... The player... Uh, the attributes for him... He doesn't really fit the mold of any particular player type. He had 13 points in 32 games last year, but kind of no-showed in the playoffs. So I'm actually kind of unsure as to whether or not he should... Uh, he should be in. But defensively... I think... We have Nurse with Carlson, Clefbaum with Latang. It has Carlo and Demoulin as, I don't know if we want necessarily defensive D-man with defensive D-man, but that could be done. I mean, hell, with Latang's age, no disrespect intended, but you get the point. We could go with Latang Demoulin as the old Pittsburgh connection. To be honest, we could go Clefbaum and Nurse, both as two-way defensemen, and then make, you know, yeah, have Carlo with Carlson. Although Carlo doesn't fit in that well on that uh, line. Carlo doesn't fit in very well in general, which I had a feeling was the case. It said he fit in well on the PK. Uh, if we were to actually have Jensen in over Carlo, he's a much better fit. And we could easily change him to be a DFD. Jensen actually fits in well on the third line. So I don't know. We have we have options there. And again, goaltending-wise, Henrik Gustafsson. This is his team to start, but I think Mrazek is a solid enough backup. I'm feeling good about where this team is. Like I said, could switch a couple of things around. I think that's kind of the one thing that they really have going for them. And by them, I mean us, is that we have a versatile team right now with a lot of different options, it's just a matter of who gets to play. As obviously Ariel Hewson will get to play on this team. So, oof, I don't know who to take out here. I think it's going to be Nick D. Simone, unfortunately. He just always seems to be the guy that gets scratched. But uh, let's, let's see what we can do here. And how's that looking? It's a bit better at least. And then forward-wise, again, that's a rough team for any AHL club with rookies to play against. Good thing is nobody is scratched that shouldn't be. Perfect. Feeling really good about it. I'm going to leave it up to you guys, though, as far as maybe, you know, what pieces go into what place. But we are listed as contenders again, which sounds about right. We're listed as contenders. We are perhaps a bit artificially boosted up for the moment. But again, if we were going to be somewhat competitive this season anyway, and it was going to probably have a good chance of ruining our chances of getting the number one pick, or at least a top three or top four pick, why not just embrace it, go for it, and bank on other people's draft picks to get us to where we want to be? Because again, I think Nurse at 6-2-5 over three, that's not a bad deal. The Clef Bomb deal's a steal. You know, we'll have Latang for the year. And who knows, by next season, Houston, Benin, these guys are probably ready to go. And who knows who we'll pick up in the draft. And then again, the Pasternak signing, much more importance placed on Gambrell and Perfetti this year. And then again, the draft pick situation is insanity. We'll be able to wheel and deal to get what we need to get. So I'm going to end it there. Let me know what you guys think as this is... It has certainly gone from, uh, you know, trying to win with the current core as much as we could to, okay, this is now a franchise mode. And you bet your sweet ass I'm going to wheel and deal to try and get this team into a competitive state. And, uh, yeah, that's all it took was one off season <laughs> to get us into uh, a very interesting spot in this series. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And, uh, yeah. David Posternock's a shark. <laughs>